But the Lord spoke to me today to lay my hands on those of you who feel God is calling you to be a teacher. In 2008, God spoke to Andrew Womack to do something he'd never done before. He imparted his teaching gift to hundreds of ministers in Uganda through the laying on of hands. These men and women had recently graduated from the Discipleship Evangelism course. Now, they teach instead of preach, multiplying the almost too good to be true news in a land that desperately needs it. For a complete report on this story, go to awmi.net and click on today's news feature. Invest yourself in Andrew Womack Ministries today. Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Thursday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today I'm continuing a series that I've entitled Redemption. And I made a teaching on this in Ontario, California, one of our Gospel Truth seminars. There was five parts to it, and we've turned this into an album. So this is a teaching product, and the second teaching in this series is entitled Eternal, Not Momentary Redemption. And today is going to be my last day to make this second teaching in the five-part set our free gift to you. So please take advantage of that. Now, I've, I've been teaching on this for a number of days, and I tell you, I consider this to be one of the most foundational things that I ever have taught. It really is all about how that our sins are forgiven, not only up until the time we confess Jesus as our Lord, but when you make that profession and you turn your life over to Jesus, put faith in Him as your Savior, He forgave all of your sins, past, present, and even the sins you haven't even committed yet. And understanding this just revolutionizes your relationship with God. It takes away condemnation and guilt, it allows you to serve God without all of these dead works. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14, we've used that verse. And I tell you, this is just a powerful truth. And it says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10, it says, By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And then Hebrews 10, 14 says, for by one offering hath he perfected forever them that are sanctified. Verse 10 says that you were sanctified through the offering of Jesus Christ once for all. Verse 14 says you've been perfected forever. And I put this together with Hebrews chapter 12, verse 23, that says it's your spirit that was made perfect. Boy, this is radical truth. And to help get this point across, today I'm just going to take a little... P.S. or a little parenthesis and insert this into this teaching. And I'm going to teach on a subject that I've entitled Spirit, Soul, and Body. I have a book out on this. I have CDs, DVDs out on this. But today we're going to offer you this book entitled Spirit, Soul, and Body. And basically this is my life's message. This understanding of who I am in spirit, soul, and body and what part of me got born again and all of this is what opened up my life to this revelation and helped me to understand this. And I believe it fits perfectly with where we are right here, so I'm going to make that as an additional offer. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, you can tell just by observation that that's not talking about your physical body because you didn't get a new physical body when you got born again. You still have the same physical body. If you had zits before you got born again, you're going to have zits after you get born again. If you were ugly before you got born again, you're going to be ugly after you get born again. Now, you can influence that to a degree. You could go get cosmetic surgery, but I'm just saying that you still have the same physical body. And yet the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things passed away, all things have become new. That's not true in the physical realm. It's not true in your emotional realm, in your personality part. If you weren't too smart before you got saved, you aren't going to be too smart after you get saved unless you begin to start renewing your mind and sharing the truth. The body and the soul have not changed. But 
What 2 Corinthians 5.17 is talking about is that when you get born again in the spirit man, you become a totally brand new person. And what does the Bible say about this spirit man? Well, there's a lot of things, but scriptures like Ephesians 4.24 says, put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. In your spirit, in this born again part of you, you are righteous and truly holy, and you were created that way. You aren't in the sense that God planted a seed of righteousness and it's beginning to grow, and eventually you will become righteous and truly holy. No, in the spirit realm, when you got born again, old things passed away, all things became new, and boom, just instantly like that, you became a new creature, and in the spirit realm, you were created righteous and created holy. Now, again, the reason I'm saying these things is because here's what happened to me. I understood through my relationship with God that God loved me independent of my performance, but I couldn't understand how he could be just. How could a holy God love an unholy me? And see, it was because I was carnal. I was carnally minded. Now, let me explain this because the word carnal to some people is a religious term, and we just equate it with being sinful and hateful and terrible. Well, all terrible sin is carnal, but not all things that are carnal are sin. The word carnal just literally means flesh as stripped of the skin. It's talking about meat. When you say chili con carne, did you know that the word carne comes from the root word that we get carnal from? It's just talking about chili with meat. The word carnal is meaning meat. When you call somebody carnally minded, you're calling them a meathead. Amen. <laughs> you're just saying that this person is dominated by what they can see, taste, hear, smell, and feel. They're just operating in the physical, natural realm, not in the spiritual realm. And see, this is the reason I had trouble believing that a holy God could love an unholy me because I was looking on the outward appearance. 1 Samuel 16, 7 says that man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. Just natural, carnal man tends to evaluate everything based on the external. We put more emphasis on how we look than how we really are. We're carnal, and we tend to look on the external. And so this is the mistake that I was making. I was looking on my outward man, and I still wasn't doing everything right. I wasn't always holy. I wasn't always studying. I wasn't always praying. I didn't always witness to people. I saw these physical things in my life that I didn't like. And I thought, God, how could you like me? But the difference is John 4, 24 says that God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God relates to us based on who we are in the spirit. And when we get born again, that spirit gets completely changed. Old things passed away, all things become new. And in the spirit realm, you were created righteous and truly holy, pure and holy. And so God, being a spirit, sees you in the spirit. He sees you differently than you see yourself. You go look in the mirror and you see zits and gray hairs and ugly and different things and you know what? You just, oh God, I just have such a hard time believing that you could love me because you don't love what you see. But God isn't looking on that external part. Now, he's aware of it. God knows all things, but God looks at you in the heart. He sees you on the inside. And if you've made Jesus your Lord, then you got born again and you are a completely brand new species of being that never existed before. You are totally awesome. You were created righteous and holy and pure. And if you've listened to the previous broadcast this week, that's what all of these verses we're talking about in Hebrews chapter 9 and chapter 10, that you've been forgiven of all sin. In the spirit realm, you've been cleansed, purified. There is no sin in your spirit whatsoever. And that verse that I quoted from Ephesians 4, 24, put on the new man, that's talking about the spirit part of you, this born-again person. Make Jesus your Lord, and then you become created in righteousness and true holiness. There is no unholiness. There is no sin. There is no impurity in your spirit. You are as righteous and holy and pure as Jesus is. That's what the scripture says in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 17. 
It says, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, speaking of Jesus, so are we in this world. It didn't say, so are we going to be in the future. Now, in the future, when we go to be with the Lord in heaven, there is going to be a change in our physical body, and we're going to get a glorified body that hasn't got any traces of sin. We're going to get a glorified soul that is completely renewed, and we'll know all things, even as also we are known. The body and the soul are going to be changed at death and reunited uh, with our physical body when we go to be with the Lord. But in the spirit right now, one-third of your redemption is complete. One-third of it is over. Your spirit is right this moment as Jesus is. Again, 1 John 4, 17, that as Jesus is, so are we in this world. And, you know, some people have tried to say, well, that means that I'm living holy and serving God the way that Jesus did. Well, give me a break. Who in the world is arrogant enough watching this program to believe that you are acting exactly as Jesus did. Even if for some reason you're under so much deception that you think you are acting as holy as Jesus is, well, then I can guarantee you, you aren't living up to the anointing that he had on his life. You aren't seeing the dead raised, blind eyes open. You know, I've seen people raised from the dead and blind eyes open. But you know what? I don't do it to the degree that Jesus did Jesus saw every person healed. Not every single time, but many cases, multitudes came and he saw every person healed. I see a few people healed. And there's multiple reasons. That's not my point in teaching on this. But I'm saying, I can't say that I am manifesting and flowing in the anointing and operating in power exactly as Jesus is. Anybody who claims that 1 John 4, 17 is talking about that we live as holy as Jesus, that we live as pure as Jesus, that we live as anointed and as powerful and operating in the gifts of the Spirit and doing everything exactly as Jesus is, well, then you are above all people deceived. There is not a person watching this program, I don't care what country you live in, I don't care what's going on in your life, for you to think that you are walking perfectly as Jesus did, you are first class deceived. This isn't talking about in your actions that you are living exactly as Jesus. The only way to interpret 1 John 4, 17, when it says, as he is, so are we in this world the only way to interpret that and to be scripturally correct, it has to be talking about this born-again part of you. In the Spirit, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, you became a new creature. Old things passed away, all things became new, and you became exactly like Jesus in your spirit. As pure as Jesus, as holy as Jesus, as powerful as Jesus, as anointed as Jesus, everything that Jesus has, you have, because it is the Spirit of Jesus that has come to live on the inside of you. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 17 says, He that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. And the word one there is the Greek word hes, H-E-I-S. It means a singular one to the exclusion of another. We aren't one with the Lord in the sense that we are now just similar that we are running in parallel directions. Here he is at a level of perfection, and here we are down here, but we are now similar to him. Nope, that's not what it's describing. It's describing a singular one to the exclusion of another. You know, I got two fingers up, and they are joined to each other, and they are close to each other, and you could sit here and say they're one in one sense, but nope, that's not what this is talking about. This is talking about that it is just one. It is one singular thing. When you get joined to the Lord, you become one with Him. Everything that is true of God is true of you. And some of you are just freaking out and saying, this can't be. And you know why? Because you go look in a mirror and try and say, you, you, this is the way that Jesus is. No, because you don't have a glorified body yet. It's going to happen to your physical body. And then you search your soulish realm and you see your thoughts and your emotions and your fears and your hang-ups and you say, and this is the way that Jesus is? No, because it's not, you don't have a glorified soul yet either. But in the spirit realm, you have been completely changed. You are now identical to Jesus. Whatever is true of him is true of your born-again spirit. 
And look at this verse. I begin this series talking from Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7 where it says, In whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of His grace. And if I had time, we could just keep on reading. But down in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13, it says, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. And this verse says that once you believe, and remember all the things that I've said, when you believe, you become a new person, that spirit who is created in righteousness and true holiness as Jesus is. That's the way that your spirit is. You become one with him. Everything that is true of Jesus is true of you. And once you believe that, then, according to Ephesians 1.13, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And, you know, there's different kinds of seals. You can put a seal, a stamp of approval on something and just say that you've inspected it or that you recommend it or something. But this is talking about a seal in the sense that like a woman, uh, you know, makes preserves and puts them in a jar that keeps impurities from coming in. And then you put paraffin or something over the top and you form a seal that preserves it. It keeps impurities from entering in and contaminating whatever it was that you preserved. This is that kind of a seal. You were created in righteousness and true holiness. As Jesus is, so are you in this world. He that's joined unto the Lord is one spirit. And in the spirit realm, you are as righteous and holy and pure as Jesus is because it is the spirit of his son that's been sent into your heart. And some people can say, well, I understand that when I first got born again, that's the way that it is. But you don't understand, I've sinned since then. And most people think that, see, that sin, that impurity was able to get into your spirit and it's defiled and now you've got to ask forgiveness again. You've got to get born again, again. I've been teaching all of this week out of Hebrews chapter 9 and chapter 10 where it says that you have received eternal redemption. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12, which redemption is the forgiveness of sins. In that spirit realm, you were created righteous and holy. God forgave you of all sins and then immediately sealed you, vacuum-packed you. There is a seal. The Holy Spirit forms a barrier around this born-again spirit. And if a born-again Christian sins, that sin will penetrate into your physical body, It'll penetrate into your soulish realm and it'll give Satan an opportunity against your body. It will give Satan an opportunity against your emotions and against your mind. You can have discouragement and depression and things like that. But that sin cannot penetrate the barrier around your spirit. It doesn't destroy this righteousness and holiness that's in your spirit. And again, I go back to John 4, 24. It says that God is a spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is looking at you in the spirit. And that seal around this new perfect creation of God, this born again spirit, that seal keeps that spirit from ever becoming contaminated by the sin that you commit. And since God is a spirit and he's looking at you in the spirit realm, then even though you sin out here in your actions and you sin in your thought life and it allows confusion and condemnation and guilt and all of these things to enter in, your spirit is never contaminated. Your spirit retains that same righteousness and holiness. And those verses that I used out of Hebrews chapter 10, verses uh, 10 and 14, you've been sanctified and perfected forever in the spirit realm. Your redemption in the spirit realm is complete. A million years from today in heaven, your spirit is not going to be any better than it is right now. It's not going to be any cleaner than it is right now. It's not going to be any more forgiven than it is right now. In the spirit realm, you are as righteous and holy and pure as you will ever be through the blood of the Lord Jesus. And then there is a seal around that so that nothing changes that your spiritual redemption is a done deal, over, complete. But we aren't only a spirit. We have a body, 
and we have a soul. We're three parts. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, he prayed a prayer, and he prayed that our whole spirit and soul and body would be preserved blameless until the day of the Lord Jesus. Your spirit is preserved. It's sealed. It's, it's sanctified, perfected forever. But your body and your soul can be corrupted and polluted by sin. And so, as much as you can, you need to live free from sin. If you don't, you're going to give Satan inroad into your physical body. You will give Satan inroad into your soulish realm, and there will be confusion and heartbreak and hurt and pain. Satan comes only to steal, kill, and destroy, so you don't want to give him access and inroad into your life. But the point that I'm making is sin has consequences, but God is a spirit, and God is looking at you in the spirit man. And in the spirit, he sees you righteous, holy, and pure, sanctified, and perfected forever. And because of that, God can fellowship with you even when you've sinned. God can use you even when you've sinned. God can answer your prayers even when you've sinned. And I know that there's some religious people hearing this program that this just infuriated them, and they can say, how dare you say that? Well, if God didn't love you and use you and answer your prayers and fellowship with you when you've sinned, then God wouldn't have anybody to fellowship with. And some of you are thinking, wow, I'm not perfect, but... And what you start doing is saying your sins aren't as bad as somebody else. James chapter 2, verse 10 says... If you keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, you become guilty of all. And so, even though, you know, for a person to say, well, I know I still sin, I'm not perfect, but at least I don't do the big sins. There is no little sins in God's sight. If you keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, you become guilty of everything. If you look at things from Scripture, if you go by what the Scripture says, then if you think that God wouldn't fellowship with you, God wouldn't have anything to do with you, God won't answer your prayer, God won't use you if you have any sin in your life, well, then none of you can ever be used. Because sin is not only what you've done that was a direct disobedience to God, but the Bible says, to him that knows to do good and does it not, to him it is sin. So sin isn't only when you transgress a specific law, but sin is when you should be doing something and you fail to do it. So sins of omission are just as bad as sins of commission. And if you use what the Bible defines sin as, then there's not a one of us that can stand before God and ever have fellowship blessing, joy, peace, prayers answered, be used if you have to be holy and pure. No, the answer to it is God is a spirit. John 4, 24, God sees you in the spirit and in the spirit, you are a transformed person. You are a new person. You are identical to Jesus if you've been born again, if Jesus is your Lord. If Jesus isn't your Lord, then you know what? You must be born again. You must get this new spirit. And then the moment that happens, God creates you in righteousness and true holiness, seals you. And from that time on, God looks at you in the spirit. And you do not lose your right standing with God because of failures in your actions. Boy, that is just some kind of powerful. Today is my last day to teach on this second teaching in our five-part set entitled Redemption. The second teaching is entitled Eternal, Not Momentary Redemption. And so please take advantage of these materials. Also, we're offering this uh, book on spirit, soul, and body in addition to all of this. So listen as our announcer gives you this information and call or write today. Andrew's complete teaching titled Redemption was recorded live at a recent Gospel Truth seminar. It's available on either CD or DVD. Each is available for 16 pounds. Request item T1056C for the CD or T3201D for the DVD. Or you can get the DVD as seen on TV for 16 pounds. Request item T1056D when you contact us. This series is also available for audio download absolutely free on our website. Go to awme.net and click on MP3 downloads on the left-hand side of the page. 
On our website, you'll also find books, newsletters, and other resources in several languages. Just click a flag on the right side of the screen to see what's available. The second teaching in the Redemption series titled Eternal, Not Momentary Redemption is available on CD for three pounds. But if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will send this second CD free of charge when you write or call. Request item TK-137C. We'd also like to remind you that Andrew's latest book titled Living in the Balance of Grace and Faith is available in hardback for £12.50. Request book T228. You can use your credit card to order resources by telephone. Our helpline number is 01922 473 300. When calling from outside the UK, you must dial your international calling code, then 44 1922 473 300. Helpline hours are from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. If the lines are busy, you can visit our website where you can order ministry materials 24 hours a day, seven days a week at awme.net. To write us, use the address on your screen. We hope to hear from you today. We'd like to point out Andrew's upcoming speaking schedule. Mark your calendars to come meet Andrew at one of these events and let the Word of God transform your life. He'll be in Warwickshire, England for the Grace and Faith Family Camp, May 28th through the 31st. For those of you looking forward to our annual Summer Family Bible Conference, remember to mark your calendars and join us in Colorado Springs, June 28th through July 2nd. For more details on Andrew's next meeting in your area, call our helpline or visit our website at awme.net. I know in my heart today that there are some people who are watching our program and you just realize that, you know what, you do not have relationship with God. Maybe you've gone through the motions and you become religious and maybe you mean well. Maybe you believe that there's a God, but the Bible says in James chapter 2 that even the devils believe and tremble at the name of God. You've got to do more than just acknowledging that He exists. You've got to have this close, intimate, personal relationship with Him. And I'd like to offer my phone center as a way for you not only to get the product, but to call and ask someone to pray with you and just make sure that you have made Jesus the Lord of your life. We have a number on your screen, so please call today and request the product and ask for prayer. But the Lord spoke to me today to lay my hands on those of you who feel God is calling you to be a teacher. In 2008, God spoke to Andrew Womack to do something he'd never done before. He imparted his teaching gift to hundreds of ministers in Uganda through the laying on of hands. These men and women had recently graduated from the Discipleship Evangelism course. Now, they teach instead of preach multiplying the almost too good to be true news in a land that desperately needs it. For a complete report on this story, go to awmi.net and click on today's news feature. Invest yourself in Andrew Womack Ministries today.